okay, you're going to be showing you proof that the Jesuits are supportive and are behind the abortion lobby, without a doubt, because the Catholic Church will claim we're the pro-life church. We, we are, we are pro-life. Well, it's kind of funny because the Jesuits support abortion, okay? And the Jesuits will speak against abortion, but good cop, bad cop type of stuff. This is from uh, Breitbart, Breitbart News. Uh, Jesuit Georgetown joins Planned Parenthood in promoting abortion as, as like a remedy. So Georgetown is a Jesuit school, and they're promoting abortion. Two law professors in a normally Catholic Georgetown University have published an article on the university website this week calling for the World Health Organization to recommend birth control and abortion in response to the Zika virus outbreak in South America in order to truly respect the dignity and health of women of childbearing age. So this is the Jesuits uh, supporting and promoting abortion. Uh, the authors state that it is critical that countries are be required to respect, protect, and fulfill women's health-related human rights, including reproductive rights, which include accessible, affordable, acceptable, and quality abortions. The article, the article, an article there, uh, titled uh, "Why the Who Must Include Access to Birth Control and Abortion in Its Temporary." Recommendations for the Zika-Associated Public Health Emergency of International Concern was posted on the Georgetown University's O'Neill Institute for National and Global Health, uh, for National and Global Health uh, blog website. Not the best at reading on a computer. I do apologize. Lawrence Augustin, faculty director and Neil of the Neil O'Neill Institute and university professor at Georgetown, and Alexander Pelham, pa Palin, I guess I said it, the adjunct professor in global health and law and doctoral researcher with the O'Neill Institute co-authored the piece. The director general's temporary recommendations sorry, just someone's calling me uh, should include a directive countries to ensure that women's risk of Zika uh, virus infection have access to birth control and safe abortion. The article states pro-abortion groups are already seizing on the Georgetown publication as a further justification for the crusade to have abortion on demand legalized throughout Latin America. And again, these are Jesuits who are behind this thing. In his advocacy for abortion as a solution to Zika health, to the Zika health crisis, Georgetown joins two international abortion giant, or sorry, joins the international abortion giant Planned Parenthood with its, which it, which is exploiting fears surrounding the Brazilian Zika crisis to promote a uh, push for a relaxation of abortion laws in Brazil and elsewhere. Elsewhere, so the Jesuits are, are the Jesuits are trying to get this child sacrifice known as abortion all throughout Latin America. Through Georgetown boasts, although Georgetown boasts of being the oldest Catholic and Jesuit institute of higher learning in the United States, it has repeatedly come under fire for having sacrificed its integrity and Catholic identity on the altars of secular of the secular academy. Well again, if you look at the, the roots of the whole abortion movement, it's Roman Catholic. Uh, William Peter Blatty, author of The Exorcist, and a graduate of Georgetown University, submitted a petition to the Vatican in 2013 asking church officials to strip his alma master of the labels of, uh, of the labels Catholic and Jesuit because it abandoned its Catholic identity. It's kind of funny because Pope Francis at one point w w would, was refusing to condemn abortion and they had to pressure him to do so. I mean, it's funny the Catholic Church is actually contradicting former teachings of the Catholic Church. It's ironic. His Pope Benedict condemned abortion and a lot of the stuff that Pope Francis is not condemning and promoting. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, in fact, declares abortion to be gravely contrary to the moral law, and it's one of the very few offenses that incurs automatic excommunication. It's funny, because Catholics get abortions in huge numbers, so why are they not being excommunicated? Ridiculous. I mean, they're all talk, but no action. Earlier this week, the Brazilian Conference of Catholic Bishops said there was no justification whatsoever to pr promote abortion. As part of the response to the Zika virus, and made clear that, uh, that the promotion of abortion in the cases of microlephaly, sorry, not the best at reading, as unfortunately some groups are proposing to the uh, Supreme Federal Courts, shows a total lack of respect for the gift of life. Nothing justifies abortion, said Rev. Lacuno. The Cuneo Brito, spoken for the Catholic Archdiocese of Olinda and Recife in Brazil, uh, just because the fetus is micro, micro ugh, suck at reading, uh, won't make us favorable. Apparently, the Georgetown knows better. Next article, again, just proving that the Catholics are behind 
the abortion movement. Jesuit priest tells Catholics. This is a real quick. Jesuit priest tells Catholics to fight abortion by electing pro-choice Democrats. Yeah, that's the, that's what they're doing right here. Uh, Jesuit Father Thomas Reese has published a disgraceful essay urging Americans to vote for pro-choice Democrats while claiming that defunding Planned Parenthood is irresponsible. Writing for Religion and News Service, Father Reese, the former editor-in-chief of American Magazine, says that pro-lifers must consider voting for candidates, even pro-choice Democrats, who will reduce the number of abortions, supporting abortions by supporting programs that help mothers and their children. Yeah, abortions definitely help the mother, because... Abortion causes depression and all kinds of other stuff. Sorry, I'm just going to go, go take a water break. I'll be right back. And uh, back. Just had to get a drink of water. I was thirsty. But let's get back right into this. So, closing Planned Parenthood clinics would provide health and birth control to women before replacements are up and running, irresponsible, or before as our story is irresponsible and counterproductive, he writes. And it goes down there. Employing convoluted... Conv- convoluted logic meant to assure that the con- the consequ- consciousness of Christians who support pro-abortion Christians, Catholics, not Christians. Again, I've said this before, Catholics don't believe in the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. They believe in a false workspace gospel. Reese claims that, uh, makes the claim that the Democrats like Hillary Clinton who support Planned Parenthood and abortion on demand are actually better for the pro-life cause than Republicans who attempt to install pro-life justices or draft legislation aimed at restricting abortions. And if you look at the Republican Party, they are controlled by the Jesuits. Definitely. Uh, Reese's argument goes uh, something like this. Abortion will never be illegal, and pro-lifers must accept the fact they they must therefore abandon efforts to rescind or limit laws permitting abortion and devote themselves instead to enacting more expensive governments to pay programs, or expensive governments, uh, government programs, sorry, that support women so they will not choose to have abortions. Sure. Yeah. And again, these are Jesuits saying this. The Jesuitical movement is behind abortion, definitely. Thinking that abortion could never be illegal is simply ignoring reality, he contends. Uh, that is on this side of the pro-choice movement. Pro-life advocates instead strongly support programs that get, or should, st- should strongly support programs that give women a real choice, increasing the minimum wage, uh, free or affordable daycare for working, and student moms free or affordable... Mm, Get the whole thing right there, free and affordable health care. Just socialist, communist garbage. Had he lived a century and a half ago, Father Reese would have found himself among the shameful Christian clerics who argued that since abortion would be possible for blacks and black slavery would never be illegal, efforts would should have been made to help slave owners treat their human property as nicely as possible. Such a politi- such political realism has uh, has ever been the ally of moral cow- cowardice. Yeah, it goes down there. Directed off edition to the U.S. bishops, Reese further asserts that the contraceptive mandate of the Obama administration will do more to reduce the number of abortions than all the legislative gimmicks of the Republican um, legislators. It's kind of funny because women claim my body, my choice, as they take my tax money for abortion. And the Jesuits are saying this is okay. Yeah. So it's your body, your choice, but it's my tax money. So it was like, oh, you, you have no, you have, it's none of your business. Well, if you're taking my tax money, it kind of is my business. You know, why do you want an abortion? You know, don't take my tax money. And it's funny, these same feminists and Jesuits who say my body, my choice, want to force me to, to, to get a vaccine and wear a mask. But I thought it's my body, my choice. I don't want a vaccine put in my body. I don't want a mask put on my face. It's my body. It's my body, my choice. Oh, but it doesn't apply for me because it's not an abortion related thing and I'm not female. The hypocrisy of these Jesuits and, and social leftist feminists is crazy. So it's your body, your choice, but when it comes to vaccines, it's not my body, my choice. Sure. Uh, Father Reese's love affair with the Democratic Party and his willingness to sacrifice moral truth... Or, I think I already read that. Oh yeah, sorry, I hadn't read that. Never mind. Jesuit Father Robert de Darien, who served on the House of Representatives from 1970, 1971 to 1981, or sorry, it's reminiscent of his conduct. So this, this Jesuit guy actually was behind partially behind the legalization of abortion in America. Uh, the vocal advocate for abortion rights, Father uh, Duranian, notably supported President Bill Clinton's veto of the Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act in 1996. A Jesuit. Oh no, but the Catholic Church is pro-life. Sure. The Jesuits are behind abortion. That's simple. This is a Jesuit who is behind the abortion and supported Bill Clinton 
who vetoed the the ban on partial birth abortion. He vetoed it. You know, and partial birth abortion is when you're basically aborting the baby when it's old enough to survive outside the womb. It's full on murder. But he's but the Jesuits supporting it. It's not surprising because the Jesuits have killed many people. The Jesuits are murderers. And the last article: Jesuit high school bans alumnus for criticizing Tim. Kane, Kane, whatever, you, I think I say his name. Officials at a Jesuit-run high school in Phoenix have banned a school alumnus from commenting on their Facebook page after he dared to criticize Tim Kane's public support for abortion. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but you get the picture. A, the, the Jesuits are behind the, the pro-choice movement, the quote-unquote pro-choice. Abortion is murder. Okay, abortion is a Jesuitical inquisition against babies. That simple. So don't be deceived when they say the Catholic Church is pro-life. It's not. It, the Catholic Church is, I mean, they, they, they may speak against abortion, they may condemn abortion, but in secret, they're be, in, behind closed doors, they're for abortion. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. Uh, may the, uh, I'm sorry. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be, be with, with you all, to the brethren. I'm trying to get into the habit of saying that because that's biblical. Uh, yeah, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with, be with all the brethren. Uh, goodbye. Thank you.